What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a super small gaming PC that will actually be very capable. Now what I'm going to be using here is an ASRock Industrial Fan Mini PC. It's actually just like a NUC. It's powered by 11th Gen i7. It's the 1165G7. And we're actually going to be pairing this up with a low profile GTX 1650. Now since this is kind of like a little NUC, a mini PC, we don't have an X16 slot. So we're going to be running this over M.2 to PCIe X16. So here's the parts I'm going to be using in this build. It might look like a mess right now, but I think I can make this look pretty decent. We have our Pico power supply, our M.2 to X16 adapter, the GTX 1650, and the main bread and butter of this build, the ASRock 1165G7 mini fanned industrial PC. The main reason I chose to use this is because I already had it on hand, and it actually runs on 12 volts. It'll run on 12 up to 19. That way we only need basically one power supply to get power to the GPU and the mini PC itself. We're going to be using this ADT Link M.2 adapter. This goes from M.2 inside of the mini PC to X16 on the outside. That way we can plug that GPU right in. And speaking of the GPU, this is a low profile MSI GTX 1650. It's the GDDR5 version, so it's not as good as the GDDR6, but I think we should still be able to get some really good performance out of this little thing. As for storage, I'm going to be using a 2.5 inch SSD, and the reason I'm using this is because I have to sacrifice that M.2 slot for the GPU, and this does support a 2.5 inch drive. So the first thing I need to do is get this M.2 to X16 adapter installed in the mini PC, and by the way, I'm going to be using 16 gigabytes of RAM with this little thing here. So we'll just place it in that free M.2 slot, go ahead and mount this down, and once we have that done, this is just kind of a test fit here. I wanted to make sure everything fit pretty nicely with that 2.5 inch drive in here. There will be a little gap, but I'll do a bit of a modification so we can get it as closed as possible. Now I kind of need to figure out a way to get this GPU mounted on this mini PC. And it actually came out way better than I thought it would. I did use a few screws through the bottom to mount that little uh, PCIe X16 adapter to the side. That way I can plug this GPU in. And it's pretty stable. I mean, I can pick this thing up. I can carry it around. And I also added a little plastic standoff on that GPU bracket so it's not so side heavy. It does sit up pretty nicely. Now I need to figure out a way to get power to the PC and the GPU. That M.2 adapter isn't going to send enough power even though we have a low power GTX 1650. And this adapter does have a little 4 pin connector on it. So what I've done here is modify this Pico power supply. And all I really have here is power in from our power supply. We have power out to the GPU with that little 4-pin mini Molex connector. And our barrel jack to power the PC, because like I mentioned, this PC runs on 12 volts. Now the one thing I really want to do in the future is just kind of extend all of these wires and mount this Pico power supply to the wall power supply. This is a 120 watt 12 volt power supply that will plug directly into the Pico, allowing it to power everything on this mini PC. Unfortunately, I just don't have enough high quality wire to extend everything right now. But when this is all said and done, I'm basically only going to have two connectors coming up to the mini PC. One for the GPU power, one for the mini PC power, and the Pico power supply will probably be mounted on the wall power supply. So it'll be all out of the way and I'll add shielding to all of this wiring. So it'll just look like one cord coming up from the back of the desk. That way I don't have this Pico power supply sitting on the mini PC. But yeah, I mean, once that's all done, I'll just have, you know, all of this extended long enough to go behind the desk. That way it's just not a mess of wiring sitting up here. But we can definitely test it like it is right now, and let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so I've already set up Windows Pro on this. I have power going to the mini PC, power going to that adapter for the GPU. Press the power button on the side. We'll get the fan spinning on that MSI GTX 1650. And one thing I've noticed is while I'm using the external GPU, I can't access the BIOS. I actually just have to take the HDMI from that external GPU and plug it directly into the built-in HDMI on the mini PC. Then I can get into the BIOS. And we're booted up. This is running HDMI out of the 1650 to the monitor. We're running this over that M.2 adapter. And if I get in here, I'm going to make this a bit bigger so we can see it on camera. Open up my task manager. For the CPU, as you can see, we have that i7-1165G7. Four cores, eight threads. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. 
We also have the built-in Iris XE graphics and the GTX 1650. So yeah, I mean, this is definitely working. It's recognized it. I was able to install the NVIDIA drivers. Let's go ahead and test a game, and then we'll get into some benchmarks and some more testing. I really want to see how this thing performs. We'll go with Doom Eternal. All right, so here we are, 1080p medium settings, 100% resolution scale. I'm getting an average of around 85 FPS. It's looking really good here at medium settings, and given that this thing's such a small form factor PC, I think performance is pretty decent. All right, so jumping right into some GPU benchmarks, we have 3D Mark Night Raid, total score of 29,575, Fire Strike, 8,400, and finally, Time Spy with a 3,697. So yeah, this is definitely an upgrade from the built-in Iris XE graphics, and for the form factor, I really can't complain. These are some pretty good scores, but let's get into some more gaming and see how this thing really performs. So first up, we have Project Cars 2, 1080p, medium, and going into this, you know, I figured medium settings would be good for the GTX 1650, but I probably could have set this to high. Because by the end of this run here, we had an average of 107 FPS. I also wanted to test a fighting game, so here's Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. 1080p high, and that's basically what I can go with. There's no ultra setting in here that I know of. I don't know if there's a secret setting, but we got 60 FPS, no problem. So fighting games should be good to go on this little system. GTA 5 was definitely all over the place, and I'm really not sure what this comes down to. It's probably that M.2 adapter, but you know, I saw anywhere from 111 FPS up to 180, but by the end of this run here, with Afterburner logging in the background, we got an average of 122 at 1080p with a high normal mix. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p low settings, we only averaged 48 FPS, and I know this is a harder one to run, but I expected to get a little more out of it with that GTX 1650. So as you saw, it can definitely game. And one thing I want to mention is this PC does have a Thunderbolt port. You can connect an eGPU to this very easily, but those eGPU docks definitely get quite pricey, and it would be a lot cheaper to go M.2 to PCIe X16. But when it comes down to it, this isn't something I would really recommend doing for a gaming machine. I mean, if this is what you want on your desk, then be my guest. You can go ahead and build one of these. It's actually really simple to put together. I'll leave some links in the description to everything I use, but you will get out much cheaper and you can get way better performance by just building a gaming PC, something a bit bigger than this. But if you're looking for small form factor and you know exactly what you're getting into, then this is a cool little project if you ask me. From the BIOS on these ASRock industrial PCs, you can go to performance mode and that's exactly what I did. When you're in normal mode, this 1165G7 is only going to run at 28 watts, but in performance mode, I mean, we saw it go up to around 46 watts in some cases. That's going to net you way better performance on the CPU side of things, but it's going to create more heat in this little tiny case. Now, I wasn't worried about the GPU overheating whatsoever because it's basically just out in the open. We'd be good to go even with a nice little overclock on this GTX 1650. So yeah, I'm impressed with the performance of this thing, given its size. I kind of wish that I had that GTX 1650 with the GDDR6. I mean, I do have one, but it's a much bigger card. I wanted to keep it as small as possible, and this is the only one I had. With GDDR6, we would have got a little better performance out of it, but you got to keep in mind that we are limited by the bandwidth of that M.2 adapter. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Like I mentioned, I will leave a few links in the description in case you're interested in building one of these. But, uh, you know, I would definitely build something a bit bigger. 
If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this thing, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.